Well, a lot of times when you think about fine lines and wrinkles, you think, oh, I don't have to worry about that till I'm in my 40s or 50s. But that process actually starts in your 20s. And so, and so one of the questions that I get a lot is, well, wh when should I start taking collagen? Well, it depends. Do you want to wait until it starts happening? Or do you want to be proactive and minimize that from happening? And if you want to do that, then you would want to start earlier, right? And so you can oftentimes think about this as a very proactive approach towards aging. What else? UV light, ultraviolet light, where does that come from mostly? It comes from the sun, right? Ultraviolet light is very damaging towards your skin. It has a profound effect on collagen synthesis. Okay, it depletes your collagen reservoir, right? Again, we have this reservoir of collagen and it depletes that, okay? And it happens at the cellular level, right? The skin cells, it can happen at the cellular level, okay? And as we mentioned, it comes from the sun, it comes from tanning beds, it can come from lighting equipment. And now there's actually some new research that's coming out where it can actually come from blue light. Does anybody know about blue light? What is blue light? Where does that come from? It comes from your phone, right? There's some data out there that shows that blue light can have damaging effects towards your skin. Okay, that, that research is still emerging. It's not as well understood as uh, UV radiation, but it's also there, right? There's aspects of that that can impact it as well. And we all know, we all have our phones, right? Okay. Free radicals, okay, that has a profound effect on the aging of healthy cells. So free radicals can come from external sources. So environmental pollution can give you free radicals and free radicals can damage healthy, skin, healthy cells within our body. And that includes skin cells, okay? So free radicals are, are a, a, a very important aspect of what, again, steals collagen, right? Think about this collagen as that reservoir, right? It's that reservoir of collagen that helps you have youthful looking skin. And these are the things that steal it, okay? There's one other thing, and, and as we started doing a lot of this research, we always talk about, no matter what product we're talking about, we always talk about eating right, right? Eating, you can take, all the supplements in the world, but if you're not eating right, and you're eating lots of sugar, then they're not gonna have the, the wonderful effects that you would expect if you're not doing the right things, like eating right. And in the case of collagen synthesis, eating right is about lowering your amount of sugars. If you eat a lot of sugars, what happens is there's this process that's called glycation. And glycation is really a simple reaction between sugars and proteins. And what happened, that reaction is called the Mallard reaction. That's, that's the chemical name for it. And what happens is it causes these protein fibers to become very stiff and malformed, okay? So your diet has a profound effect on collagen, its synthesis, and its ability to create that youthful look. And so that's something to think about as well when you talk about all these different things to uh, the steel collagen. Okay, so what can we do to prevent it? Well, the UV radiation, we can use sunscreen, right? Sunscreen helps keep uh, UV radiation away from us. We can also have a proper diet, right? Not so much refined sugars, okay? Because that steals collagen. And then we can avoid free radicals, right? We can stay away from external contaminants, environmental pollutants, and that helps uh, keep our that reservoir of collagen available for us so that we can have that youthful look Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. You're good. Okay All right, so let's talk about collagen now. Okay, let's now talk about collagen The interesting thing about this presentation that I put it together is it really will give you kind of a behind-the-scenes look of how we develop products what do we look at as we're developing products from an ingredient standpoint? Which ones make the most sense for us to put in this product? And this is no different. And there's a lot of science, there's a wealth of science and research that goes into it. So you're gonna get kind of a sneak peek as to how we develop this product as we talk about the different ingredients. Okay? All right, before we do that, 
I want to do a real short video to kind of summarize what we talked about in terms of collagen, and then we'll talk a little bit about TF collagen. Okay? Hi, I'm Dr. Tori Parker, and I'm the Vice President of Product Development for Life Research. I'm excited to talk about one of our newest and top selling products, For Life Transfer Factor Collagen. Collagen is a growing market right now. It's flying off store shelves, and beauty influencers are raving about it. Your personal trainer, your hairstylist, and your dentist may all take it. Why is everyone getting so excited about collagen? Let's dive into the science. Collagen is a vital protein your body makes naturally. Scientists have identified 28 different types of collagen in the human body. In fact, roughly 30% of your body's protein is collagen. Think of it as the glue that holds your body together. Pretty amazing stuff. Collagen has that kind of strength. Now collagen is made up of amino acid chains. When the amino acids are in a different order, they make up different kinds of collagen with different functions in the body. For example, one collagen chain may be like this white chain that I have here. Another collagen chain has a different structure, maybe more like the yellow chain. And yet, a third type of collagen may have a different structure, more like this metal chain. Collagen is part of the connective tissue throughout your body and is found in your muscles, joints, hair, nails, and skin. Like this rope, collagen is both strong and allows flexibility so you can move your joints and your skin and your body. As your body ages, Collagen production decreases, and the collagen your body produces as you age is also less effective. It supports healthy joints, muscles, connective tissue, nails, hair, and skin. For Life Transfer Factor Collagen comes in powder packets that you can mix in a bottle of water. Plus, For Life Transfer Factor Collagen is the only collagen supplement in the world that has transfer factor in it. Four Life Transfer Factor is an ingredient unique to Four Life that supports your immune system and helps it remember and respond to potential health threats. That means that Four Life Transfer Factor Collagen supports a healthy immune system in tandem with total body age-defying support. Every product that Four Life develops goes through strenuous testing and extensive research. Collagen is no different and has been validated by third-party testing and research. Thanks for tuning in to learn more about the science behind collagen. Try 4 Life Transfer Factor Collagen today, a science-backed product for skin and structural support that also enhances your immune system. Visit 4Life.com today to learn more. Okay. So the first and main ingredient is the hydrolyzed collagen, and that comes from fish. Sorry. All right. Uh, the second ingredient, as we just learned in the video, is trifactor formula. Okay, there's 100 milligrams of transfer factor trifactor formula. Then we also have vitamin E and vitamin C in the bodies. And we're gonna talk about each one of those, okay? So the collagen that we, so we talked earlier about collagen and how it makes up our skin and how it has this, uh, this helix, triple helix. Well, the collagen that is present in TF collagen is actually hydrolyzed collagen. And hydrolyzed collagen, remember these are the triple helix. Hydrolyzed collagen actually unfolds this helix structure to give us these different amino acids and then it's enzymatically digested or hydrolyzed into smaller peptides. Now, why is that important? Why is that process important? Well, because the collagen protein itself, if that's what we use, it's a very large protein. And large proteins are hard to digest for us. Our body does a really good job of extracting out nutrients, but if those proteins are very, very large, then it's hard to digest. And it's not as efficient and not as bioavailable. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, now, on the other side, if we digested them all the way down to our building blocks, right, these amino acids, then what happens is we lose the information because each peptide
has certain information that our body knows and that information allows our body to distribute it where it needs to be. And if you break it down into these small amino acids, you've lost that information. And so our body can utilize it, but it may not utilize it as efficiently as possible because it's lost that memory of what it's supposed to be used for. And so with the hydrolyzed collagen, what it actually does is kind of the middle ground between a large protein and a small amino acid. And so there's enough information within these smaller peptides where they know once we ingest them and then we get absorb them into our blood, there's still enough information for it to know what is the target tissue that it goes to. Does it go to the hair? Yes. Does it go to the nails? Yes. And it also goes to the skin because that's the information. And we'll talk a little bit about what those amino acids are. There's specific amino acids that help our body understand where it needs to go. Okay? Does that make sense? So easy to digest, easy to, do, to absorb. That's the collagen that's in our product. And that's one of the reasons why we choose the specific collagen that we do, and I'll talk about that in a second. Okay? So one of the things that uh, as you go out and talk about TF Collagen and as you build your business around TF Collagen, one of the things, and I'm sure you probably have already had to deal with this, is how is our collagen better than everybody else's collagen, right? You can go down to the drugstore, you can go to a supermarket. In the US, we go to Costco, and there's all kinds of collagens out there. But which one's the best, right? What source of collagen is the best? And why should we have transvector collagen? And if you can explain those to someone, then that allows you to differentiate why our collagen is better than the other collagens. And that's really important, right? Because people can go out and buy collagen anywhere, right? It's very, very, Steve talked about the market, it's huge, right? And so we have to be able to distinguish what's good about ours, what's different about ours. Okay, that's a very important aspect as you go out and talk about that. Okay, and there's really four things that we looked at as we developed this product. And so now we're gonna kind of get the behind the scenes look of how we develop products at Four Life. And it all starts with the ingredients. Because if you don't have good ingredients, then there's no way you're gonna have a good product, right? I mean, that makes sense, right? If you don't start with the best ingredients, there's no way that you can make a good product. You may be able to market a good product, a product, but if you don't have good, high quality ingredients, then people are gonna learn pretty quickly that it just doesn't work, okay? And so, as we start to develop this, so two years ago when we started talking about collagen, we started looking at these very things because we want a high quality protein, a high quality collagen, right? That's the, that's the start of a collagen product is to have a high quality collagen. And then, these are the tests, these are the techniques that we did to understand what are the best sources of collagen, right? Because did you know there's all kinds of sources of collagen out there, right? You can get collagen from all kinds of places, but which ones are the best? And so we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna use these different aspects to understand why the collagen that we have in TF collagen is the best type of collagen you can have, okay? So the first thing we talk about is we're going back to the amino acids, okay? And really what we want to look at is, as we examine these different sources of collagen, we want to know how much uh, collagen is in these different sources. Is it a high level of collagen or is it a lower level? And what you find is the three different sources that we were focusing on, which is where most uh, of the collagen that is in the collagen product comes from, it comes from fish, marine, bovine, which is cow, and then also chicken, okay? And what you can see here, right off the bat, is that the collagen that comes from marine is already a pretty high quality in terms of the content, okay? So that's one of the first things you look at is, is there a lot of content in terms of collagen in these different sources? And if there is, then that's the starting point, right? And so you can see very quickly that chicken does not have as much collagen in that material that it does with fish or even bovine, okay? And then what you wanna look at is what is the composition, right? What are these amino acid building blocks? 
because our body knows which ones, which amino acids it needs for your skin, for your hair, for your nails. And those are actually these four collagens here. I've highlighted them. Glycine, proline, hydroxyproline, and arginine. And so you want to have a high composition, a high content of those proteins because those proteins, or, sorry, those peptides, that hydrolyzed collagen is specific in our bodies to know where to go through the target tissue. Okay, so having high amounts of that is very important. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, our body has to uh, be able to see those different amino acids, recognize those amino acids because that's how it knows where what target tissue needs to go to. Okay? All right, then we also want to talk about the size. The size of the collagen, right? So remember, we're taking this collagen and we're hydrolyzing it, right? We're not hydrolyzing it down to amino acids. We're hydrolyzing it down into smaller peptides. And why are smaller peptides important? What did we talk about peptides versus protein? Better digestion, right? Better absorption, better bioavailability, okay? Easier for our body to utilize that, okay? So the size is very important. And you can see here that some of them are a little bit different. And what you see in the fish collagen or the marine collagen is you see this very nice, even distribution of collagen peptides, okay? And so it's very, uh, very much the size we want it to be uh, in terms of digestion and absorption, okay? So that again is another important aspect of choosing what is the best collagen, okay? Does that make sense? Size matters, right? Okay, then one of the, uh, probably the biggest thing as we investigate different ingredients and understand which ones are the best are really this research that goes into it. And that involves clinical studies. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about the clinical studies on this. This is again for our marine collagen, our fish collagen. And one of the important things about doing these studies is that they have to be independent, right? It's not us doing the study and getting our own results. These are actually independent studies. Okay, so that's important. It's important when you do these studies to have a placebo, a placebo control. Is it, does everybody know what a placebo is? Okay, so a placebo, for those of you who don't know, it's kind of like a sugar pill. It's a pill that doesn't have any active components because when people are doing these tests or these clinical studies, they don't want to be biased. They can't be biased. They can't say, oh, this person's taking collagen, so they look better compared to this person who's taking placebo who's not really taking anything because that introduces what we call bias into the studies. And we want our studies to be independent and unbiased. And so we have to have a placebo in there. They also have to be blinded. So the people, the dermatologists, the clinicians who are evaluating uh, the study participants, they can't know who's taking collagen and who's not, right? Because if they know, then it might introduce bias into, their, into how they evaluate somebody. And so all of the results that you see, you will see a comparison between the collagen, the people who take collagen, and the people who take placebo. And you have to see a difference between those, otherwise it doesn't have an effect, okay? Does that make sense? So clinical, in these types of studies, clinical studies are so important because they tell you whether, this, whether your ingredient works or not. And that's one of the things that we look at and we pay a lot of attention to because if it doesn't work, right, if there's not clinical studies that shows that it works, then why would we want to put it in our product? We don't want to put ingredients in there that don't work, right? We want them to work, we want them to be backed by science, and that's really something that as you go out there and you talk uh, to your potential customers, that you can say, all of the products that we work on, that For Life develops, they are all backed by science, right? They're all demonstrated to work because we've done all the studies to show that they work. And collagen is no different in that respect. Okay, in this particular study, we looked at middle-aged women because those provide the best opportunity to see an effect, right? As a middle-aged woman, uh, generally you will start to see the telltale 
signs of aging, right? The fine lines and wrinkles, the elasticity. And so these are wonderful subjects to be able to examine what impact does collagen have, okay? And so what you'll see from these different studies, you'll see the demographic is all the same, right? In this particular study, they took two and a half grams of collagen and they took it for 12 weeks, okay? And of course, these studies, we were dermatologists who did these studies, so you can consider it as dermatology tested. And because it was a clinical study, it was a placebo-controlled double-blind study, you can say that they are clinically proven, okay? So these are very important aspects of the research that goes into these products because they allow us to, de to decide whether this ingredient works or not, okay? All right. So one of the first things that they looked at in this particular study was elasticity, right? Our, our skin's ability to bounce back, okay? Elasticity is also considered as firmness. You can also think about it at, in terms of fatigue, okay? In this particular study, they, it's actually a pretty cool instrument. It's called a cutometer. And the cutometer, what it essentially does is it provides a small little suction on your skin 